What is up everyone? My name is Joe Hamilton from GGD and today we are doing a FAQ question and answer video about the One Kit Wonder Aggressive Rock Library that we recently released. I put up a question on the GGD forum. If you're not a member, why not? What are you doing? Quit wasting time. Go join it at facebook.com slash GGD... Nope. Facebook.com slash groups slash GGD forum. Um, you get exclusive peeks at stuff, tips and tricks, and we're all on there answering questions. So, time for question number one. Tom Waller, which studio was it recorded in? Middle Farm? Question mark? Uh, no, this was actually recorded in Nolly's home studio. He's got an awesome room which we used for recording the drum kits. We actually used the same room for Modern Fusion, um, and something I thought was really cool was how drastically different the room mics actually sound. And um, this was down to Nolly's knowledge and expertise in achieving different room sounds with placement of the kit, placement of the microphones, and what's even in the room at the time. Uh, Matt Sloggett. I like this one way more than the first one could wonder. Sweet. I'm glad that we are bringing out different flavors that appeal to different people. That's really cool. Adam Wayne, it sounds like there are three toms around 45 seconds into the audio demo for this Wonka Wonder. Uh, the audio demo he's referring to is the video made by Caleb Shomo of Beartooth. Only two featured in the GUI, doth my ears deceive me or is some stacking and pitch shifting wizardry at play? Nope. Um, Nolly actually replies to this question, which is another reason for you to join. Nolly's there and he talks to you. Uh, there are no extra toms nor magic involved. The fill repeats the floor tom pattern twice. So rack tom, floor tom, floor tom. Next question from Christian Morigia. Morigia. Is this an expansion of the first one, Kiwondo, or can I use it without buying the first one? Uh, it's not an expansion. All our libraries are independent from one another, so you can get the One Kit Wonder Aggressive Rock without having to get the One Kit Wonder Modern Fusion, but they're so cheap you may as well get both. Are TCI files included? No. Uh, we don't include TCI files with the OneKit Wonder series. The whole point of the OneKit Wonder series is that they're sort of songwriting tools for people who just want to load up the kit and not think about external mixing and achieve really sick drum tones. We also wanted to keep the price low, which is why we haven't included the TCI files. Um, you can, of course, create these yourself by programming a bunch of hits, bouncing them to audio, and then cutting them up and creating TCI files yourself. Uh, what kit is this from Manu... Gentoo. The info for what the kit is is actually all on our website on the product page. So let's walk through it. The kick is a 24 by 17 Tama Star Classic Maple Kick. So it's really wide and quite shallow. That means you can tune it really low and the sustain is more managed by the shallow depth um, and it creates a really punchy, punchy tone. The toms we used were um, matched to the kick, so part of the same drum kit. We have a 14 by 11 rack tom, uh, so that's huge for a rack tom. It's actually a floor tom that we put on a tom mount off the cymbals. Uh, so we did this so we could get these really low tuned, huge sounding toms, and the toms are one of my favorite things about this kit. And then we've got a another maple 16 by 16 floor tom. The snare is a Ludwig Supraphonic COB that means copper over brass, 14 by 6.5. So nothing crazy unique about the snare, it's just a really, really good snare. Um, it's brass, as I said, with a copper sort of finish. Ooh, is it copper over brass or copper over bronze? Yeah, no, I was right, copper over brass. The hi-hats, we did something new with this library for GGD, which is Sabian cymbals. We thought, why not mix it up and get some new flavors to our libraries? The hi-hats we used were the Sabian HHX Evolution 14 inch. The crashes were a pair of 18 and 19 inch uh, HHX Evolution crashes. The ride is a Sabian hand hammered raw bell dry ride, 21 inch. This thing sounds so good. The bell is just the china is actually my own personal china, uh, which is a Sabian Paragon china, 19 inch. Um, the Paragon series was actually made in collaboration with Neil Peart. And you might not think of aggressive rock when you think of Neil Peart, but the Paragon chinas are really aggressive. They're awesome chinas. And it's kind of cool to have my own symbol sort of immortalized. And then for effects, we have the splash, which is a 10 inch HHX evolution splash. That boy be fierce. That's a fierce splash. 
Next question, Reed Butterfield. I heard that when routing multiple instruments out to multiple contact tracks, the parallel processing is on its own track. Is this true? Um, if you could explain that a little more, does the reverb automatically get routed to its own contact track too? So, um, the reverb and parallel compression is actually happening from the effects built into contact. And the effects built into contact are by default locked to the first stereo output. So if you want to isolate those for mixing, have your parallel compression and reverb on stereo output one, and then start your kick and then the rest from two onwards. Uh, Chan, man, I would love to see a hit list of all the types on all the different symbols and shells. It'd be great if you could provide this for every kit available. Just a screenshot of the settings menu where the drum mapping is would be great. In particular for me, I would like to know if this kit has a ride edge or wash. Uh, yeah, that's a good idea. I'll, I'll suggest that to the guys. Um, here are the mappings available. Um, again, slightly less articulations from our full fat libraries um, in an effort to cut down size, computer load, and price. You've still got your sort of rim clicks and then you can really recreate the other articulations missing on the snare just by programming them carefully. Uh, it does not include a ride edge or wash. We gave it a go on the ride, but we weren't totally happy with how it sounded, so we didn't record it. And we also felt with 18 and 19 inch crash cymbals, they're large enough where you can achieve a very similar sound by just programming the velocity slightly less on those crashes. Scott King, what is the difference between the processing of the Wonka Wanda aggressive rock versus the turbo functions in Modern and Massive or our other full fat libraries. So in those libraries, the turbo function is actually processing done within contact. Behind the hood of contact, there's a series of effects, EQ, compression, reverb, stuff like that. And so in those, the turbo functions are actually done through those. Whereas the processing of the One Kit Wonder series is actually Nolly's own personal external processing that he applies before the samples are even loaded into contact. Last but not least is Reed Butterfield. Could we get a walkthrough tutorial for Caleb's demo or Nolly's demo or Misha's demo so we can see how easy it is to drop this One Kit Wonder kit into a project, maybe with downloadable stems mainly for practice purposes? Um, Nolly has recently put up a video he did showing him mixing the One Kit Wonder aggressive rock kit into sort of like a dad rock kind of tune, uh, which recently went up on our YouTube page. So that's exactly what you're after. And what's more is that I do believe uh, Nolly actually put this in the forum and included the neural DSP parallax preset that he used in this demo for you to download. So go onto the forum, search his name uh, using the search and you'll find this post and the preset that he used for you to use. That's pretty cool. All right guys, well I hope this was informative. I hope it answered all your questions to a satisfactory level. Um, as I said, make sure to join our Facebook forum at facebook.com slash group slash GGD forum for more access to FAQs, tips, tricks, tutorials, and even sneak peeks and the like. So, all right guys, well thanks for watching and I will catch you uh, next time.